Hello, MCU fans. Today we're going to look at the question of, are the pre-Disney Plus shows canon? Meaning the shows that, that have Marvel characters but came out before Disney Plus was launched. Are they canon? Uh, it's been a hotly debated topic uh, by many. Uh, and it, you know, people's feelings vary from show to show, but certainly it's been discussed off and on many, many times, uh, all the more recently now that some of these shows have actually shown up on Disney+. Plus. So let's look at whether these shows are canon. Now, it, it's important to point out that because of life in the multiverse, uh, thanks to uh, Loki uh, and Sylvie creating the multiverse, really anything could be considered canon. It just may not be part of the main MCU universe, but really anything can be because, I mean, goodness gracious, we had a paint universe, a cube universe. That pretty much opens the door to any of the TV shows being part of the multiverse. Yes, that means there could actually be an Incredible Hulk uh, universe and, uh, sadly enough, a Spider-Man universe. Oh, that was not a good show. I watched it as a kid. It was all we had, so it was good at the time, but oh my, oh my. But yes, you, you could argue every single TV show uh, with Marvel characters uh, is somewhere out there in the multiverse. So maybe the question we should really be focusing on is which pre-Disney Plus shows are canon to the 616 universe, the main universe? Well, let's take a look at all of the shows out there. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's, it's amazing. There were 17 shows, 37 seasons, 468 episodes all spanning from 2013 to 2021. Now, obviously there were shows that came out before 2013, but what uh, is really being focused on here today are the shows that came out when Marvel Television uh, was created as part of an entity underneath uh, the overall Marvel uh, at, at, well, ultimately at Disney. It uh, wasn't at Disney at first, of course, but uh, ultimately at Disney. So we're just looking at the shows that have come out uh, from 2013 to 2021. Notice also across the networks, ABC, Netflix, Hulu, FX, Fox, Freeform. I mean, they were everywhere. It's really quite impressive, the work that was done by Marvel TV. Um, and this is all, again, when it was a separate division from uh, the movies. And Kevin Feige had no control over TV. So that actually explains why... Uh, there's this canon question because these things were done without uh, Feige's oversight. Now, granted, none of them tried to go against what was happening in the movies. None of these are intentionally non-canon to the main universe. In fact, I think they were all produced with the assumption they are all canon. But with the reorganization where uh, Kevin Feige now is over TV and movies, there's certainly uh, we've seen a lot more synergy between the TV shows and the movies. So what about these pre-Disney Plus TV shows? Are they canon to the 616 universe? Well, let's start at the top here. Um, we have uh, Hulu's universe that never was. Um, Hulu had a universe they were creating called, or branded rather, Adventure Into Fear. And the one show and only show that was released was Hellstrom, after Damien Hellstrom. Um, but they did have plans to bring in the same actor that played Ghost Rider in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but as I understand, it was going to be a different version of Ghost Rider, so I don't know how that made any sense, but that, that, was, that was what I heard at least. Um, and then also a man thing was certainly assumed to be a character uh, as well as others. Um, I believe there was up to, going to be up to four different shows that tied into this, but um, only Hellstrom was released. Uh, it was not really tied at all to anything. It is very likely that with Marvel now releasing their new kind of horror-related characters uh, with um, uh, the Black Knight and Blade and maybe Moon Knight, you know, they're kind of recreating this type of concept. It is very unlikely Hellstrom, therefore, is considered canon to our universe. It could be, but very unlikely. Uh, they're probably just going to sweep this one away and, and move on. Then we have Hulu's second universe that never was. Uh, Hulu looked at creating several shows. Uh, they released Modoc and uh, Hitmonkey, but they were really going to do four, again, four seems to be the magic number for Hulu, four different shows, uh, including uh, Tiger and Dazzler and Howard the Duck. Now, those two were canceled before they were even released, and there was only one season of Modoc and Hitmonkey. Uh, again, very unlikely these are considered canon. 
Um, I don't know that they were actually ever meant to be considered canon, to be honest. Um, but uh, yes, all canceled and, and swept under the rug for the most part. Now, then we can look at some of the Fox X-Men universe shows. Uh, both Gifted and Legion uh, were created and were presumed to be part of the Fox X-Men universe. So obviously not part of MCU canon in the uh, 616 universe. But honestly, I, I, I watched all the episodes. I'm not 100% sure they're even canon to the Fox X-Men universe. Uh, we'll see, you know, as, as we begin to see mutants appear in um, the MCU, be interesting if any of these characters uh, come along, but th they're either canon to the Fox X-Men universe or they're off in their own universe, but certainly not part of 616. Uh, then we have two interesting shows, Runaways and Cloak and Dagger. Now, the reason I put these two together is uh, while one was on ABC and the other was on uh, Freeform, there was an episode of Runaways that featured Cloak and Dagger. So that was really interesting. Now, we're finally getting to shows that are showing up on Disney Plus because Runaways is on Disney Plus. Uh, Cloak and Dagger is not, but it'd be kind of nice if it ultimately was. Um, so, you know, could these be canon, either one or, or both? Well, one big problem in Runaways is they featured a version of the Darkhold. Uh, obviously, it looks very different from the Darkhold in um, a WandaVision and uh, ultimately in Multiverse of Madness and was just kind of explained differently. So it, it seems unlikely, therefore, that Runaways would be considered canon. And also there was a, a time travel storyline in the last seasons of Runaways, uh, last season of Runaways, which pretty much broke the rules of the endgame time travel. Uh, so it, even though Runaways is on Disney+, Plus, you'll note that it is not shown in their timeline the MCU timeline. And so fun show, enjoy watching it, but very, very likely not 616 canon. Uh, then we move to the Inhumans experiment. I say experiment because I really think this is what broke the back ultimately of Marvel TV. Um, it was not one of the last shows released. There were several shows released after this, but this one was really hyped. It was going to be this awesome, exciting show. And in fact, it premiered in, in movie theaters, the first episode or two. Um, it featured uh, lots of the characters we remember from the comics, you know, obviously Medusa. And while she actually had her hair, which was brief, uh, it was very interesting to watch. Uh, unfortunately, they shaved her hair within the first episode or two, if I remember right, and it, it just was never the same. Uh, but we had Gorgon, and, and he, you know, he was made to be comic accurate. Uh, Lockjaw was awesome. Uh, really enjoyed having him on the show. But it, 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 number one, it wasn't very good. Um, it didn't tie to anything. Um, you know, theoretically, it was going to tie to Agents of Shields, Agents of Shield, and their Inhuman storyline, and it never really did. So it's honestly unlikely that Inhumans would be considered a six one six canon. You can still watch it; it's on Disney Plus, but very unlikely it's canon. Although it was very cool to see Black Bolt show up in Multiverse of Madness in uh, one of the different uh, multiverses. And it is played by the same actor. It was a little hard to tell that at first since he's got the more comic accurate headgear, um, but that is Anson Mount. Um, so that was kind of cool. So it, it, once again, showing that we're not throwing away these shows just by saying they're not 616 canon. They're canon, they're just in a different universe. Now we get into the ones that are tougher. I say tougher because number one, they were very well done. Uh, excellent characters, um, I so badly want them to be canon. So Agent Carter, uh, let's start with the fact that there was a one shot and that one shot was kind of considered a pilot for Agent Carter and um, was very well done. And the, the one shot is in the MCU timeline, official MCU timeline. So it's, it's assumed that the Agent Carter one shot is 616 canon. Then we get to the TV show. Now, my biggest struggle with the TV show from the get-go was it didn't seem to tie into the one shot at all. Now, maybe they were trying to say the one shot didn't happen, or maybe you could argue after season two, and there should have been a season three that was such a bummer it got canceled, but 
whenever the show was going to end, maybe the assumption was that's when the one shot happened. Because the one shot, as you remember, that's when she joined S.H.I.E.L.D. after the one shot. But in the Agent Carter TV show, she's not uh, running S.H.I.E.L.D. yet. So it's just weird, though, to think that after all the stuff that she did in the TV show, that she would then be treated so poorly in the one shot. Uh, so they just don't fit. They, they don't fit well together. So um, it almost seems it's an either or. Either the one shot's canon or the TV show is canon. Now, it is interesting to note that there is a character from the TV show, uh, Jarvis, that shows up in Endgame. So if nothing else, the character of Jarvis, played by the actor you know, that played Jarvis in the Agent Carter TV show, is canon to 616 MCU. But as, we, as we've also learned, there can be variants that look the same across universes. So just because he appeared in Endgame does not mean that the Agent Carter TV show is Endgame, or, or is, is Endgame, is canon. Um, and then also keep in mind, we have seen variants of Peggy Carter. We've seen her show up in Multiverse of Madness, and we've seen her show up in What If. So I, I have to look at the fact that Agent Carter's TV show is streaming on Disney Plus, but is not shown in the timeline. And the fact that it doesn't really tie to the one shot, and I would argue it is not canon to 616, but it's absolutely canon. Uh, it's just in a different universe. And that all we saw in Endgame was the canonization of the look for Jarvis. That is, that same actor uh, played him. Uh, in, in Endgame, but also plays him in a different universe in uh, the Agent Carter TV show. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, man. I loved every season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You talk about a series that tried its best to stay within Marvel canon, to, to link it linked to Winter Soldier. Obviously, that was a huge reference to the movies. Uh, we've had uh, Sif appear. We had Maria Hill appear. We had Nick Fury appear. I mean, there, there can't have been a stronger attempt to make the TV show canon. We even had a movie where or, that tied to the TV show. Now, it was a loose tie, but Age of Ultron, technically that helicarrier that shows up at the end, Nick Fury mentions uh, he got some help from a friend. Well, if you watch the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, you see that friend is Coulson, who helped keep that helicarrier in working operations so that it could be used in an emergency. Um, but the fact that Age of Ultron never officially said, oh, by the way, Agent Coulson, he's the one that gave it to me, it could have been any friend, and that doesn't, that doesn't mean the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show actually happened in 616 MCU. But it certainly was an attempt to push the show back into the movies. But the reason that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets tricky is the farther along they went, the more they kind of just did what they wanted. And it has now, in hindsight, contradicted with 616 MCU. What do I mean? Well, unfortunately, once again, the Darkhold showed up. Now, if you notice, the Darkhold looks the same as the one in Runaways. So the TV shows were trying their best to be consistent. But basically, the Darkhold has been handled completely differently in WandaVision and in Multiverse of Madness. So it's, it's a different Darkhold. Um, now, Ghost Rider isn't an issue yet, but Ghost Rider is going to show up in the 616 MCU before long, and I am betting that it is not going to tie at all to the storyline that we saw in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is a shame because that was a fantastic version of Ghost Rider. But we'll have to wait and see. You know, that's an early prediction on my part. But where we really run into trouble is season seven uh, had a time travel storyline, which was awesome. It was an incredible story, but um, doesn't really follow the, the timeline rules of Endgame. And so, uh, and probably because they didn't know the timeline rules of Endgame because there was not any communication between the movies and the TV shows. So that made it tricky. And then at the end of season seven, uh, several of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. join what certainly appears to be S.W.O.R.D. Now, they don't use the S.W.O.R.D. name, at least I don't recall it, and I'm not sure they were even allowed to use it, but it certainly implied this was S.W.O.R.D., and of course, you know, S.W.O.R.D. is going to now be handled differently in the MCU. So none of these things are Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s fault. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. introduced concepts without knowing where the movies were going and with no guidance whatsoever, 
So it just created some contradictions. But to me, the backbreaker is the tie to Infinity War. At the end of season five, you know, beginning of season six, we were waiting to see, okay, how's it going to tie? How's it going to tie? Well, it turned out it didn't at all. I mean, there was no mention in season six whatsoever of half the world, half the universe being blipped away. Um, it's just, it's not fair to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They didn't know. They, 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 they admitted, the writers admitted, they did not know what was going to happen in Infinity War. It was, they were even kept in the dark. So they advanced the story, I believe, a year because they thought, well, surely that's far enough. We'll, we'll go a year forward. Nope, they technically needed to go five. Um, so what do you do with all this? Well, again, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is streaming on Disney+. Plus. It is not listed in the main timeline. Um, and I've shown that there are just several inconsistencies. It's just simpler to accept. It's not 616 canon. Um, there may ultimately be, ultimately be elements that they pull from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We'll have to see. But, I mean, even Mockingbird um, appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and was referenced uh, that um, Hawkeye's wife went by Mockingbird. Um, and so then what does that mean? You know, they just, they, they just went different directions at the bottom line. So it pains me to say this, but I, I just don't see how Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. can be considered uh, 616 canon. So then the final bit of shows, the ones probably nearest and dearest to everyone's heart, uh, the Netflix and now Disney Plus shows, originally Netflix, um, which would of course be Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Punisher, and then the big team up Defenders. These shows did a really impressive job of staying with an MCU canon, mainly by not really referring to the MCU, but just by staying ground level and making a couple sly references to the incident or the big green guy and things like that, but really staying away from anything that would be happening in the movies so that they were able to operate on their own little world, yet still not really break canon. In fact, I would argue there is currently nothing in any of these shows, in any of the, the Netflix shows that breaks canon. So that's the good news. The bad news is, oh, in fact, I should also point out, sorry, before the bad news, let's talk more good news. We've seen several characters showing up in the MCU, uh, 616. We've now seen Daredevil show up in No Way Home. We've seen Kingpin show up in Hawkeye, uh, even to the point where the the apartment that the Kingpin had in season three of Daredevil, the last season on Netflix, was the uh, um, set piece for the much of Hawkeye, including the ballroom uh, scene. Uh, and even down to the Kingpin's um, uh, jewelry that meant so much to his dad and so much to him. Um, you know, the, 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 they have done everything they can to say, hey, not only did the shows not break canon, but we're not breaking canon in bringing these characters forward, that, that so far everything could fit. So uh, as I alluded to a second ago, the bad news is I suspect Iron Fist is going to be the problem. I suspect that we will A, not see that actor be used in the MCU 616, but more importantly, because we've seen actors change, that's not the end of the world. I don't think Iron Fist is going to make it into the 616 universe. His story is too similar to Shang-Chi. Um, the, the Iron Fist series was not well received. Um, I just think that that was a mistake, uh, that Netflix kind of fell asleep at the wheel on, on, that, on that show. It was better in the second season than the first season. But So for now, everything could be canon, but how Marvel in the 616 universe decides to handle Iron Fist will, will make a big difference because if they say, no, there's no Iron Fist, maybe they kill him and, and he really was there, but now he's dead. But if they just simply say, no, there never was an Iron Fist, that really puts a wrench in things because Iron Fist teamed up in the Defenders. The Defenders led heavily into Daredevil season three. You really can't just wipe out Iron Fist and, and have everything remain okay. So... Right now, what people are assuming is one of two things, that until we know differently, they're all canon to MCU 616, or they happened in a different multiverse, as is, so as presented by Netflix, 
And then in the MCU 616, any of the elements from the shows that Marvel wants to bring forward, they will, like Daredevil, like Kingpin. I'm sure we're going to see Jessica Jones before long, and hopefully we're going to see Luke Cage. So what they may be saying is, you can go watch the shows, and that happens somewhere. But the pieces we want to have happen in the MCU 616, those happened, and those are canon. It's a really weird way to go, but every time I've read an article or heard interviews, they're kind of saying, oh, let's say 80% of the show is canon, and the parts we don't want, we're just wiping out. So it leaves us in an interesting place, but that's why for now, whenever I do a timeline, I'm not including these shows because right now we just don't know. Uh, so personally, I would move them towards the not canon, um, but, but you could argue they're canon until we learn different. So I hope this helped. It, it, it won't end the debate by any means. It might even spark more debate. Uh, you know, put put down in the comments what you think. I'd love to know your opinions. Um, you know, are these shows all of them? Everyone I've discussed are are they MCU six one six canon or are they not? Uh, are they just off in a different multiverse somewhere? So anyway, uh, please like and subscribe, and um, you can watch some more content. And in the meantime, continue to enjoy the ever-growing, ever-expanding Marvel Cinematic Universe.